one needs to look at the popular concept of success, whether it is acceptable. If the popular concept is taken into account as a concept of success, one is going to be fractionally successful, which is no success at all. If you have to fulfill all your desires in all spheres, including domestic sphere, then the rate of success is going to be highly fractional, point not 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 one. <laughs> so, I need to look at success properly, I said, and entirely differently. I said desiring is a privilege, desires are the manifestation of this privilege, Icha Shakti privilege. Therefore, why should I not enjoy the privilege that I have desires is a privilege. Why should I not enjoy? I cannot, because desires are meant to be fulfilled. You do not desire for a thing you have. You always have a desire for a thing that you do not have or a desire for retaining a thing you have. Of course, you want to retain the form is to be retained, the value is to be retained, like the value of money, you have money, you want to retain the money, then you have to retain the value of money against inflation, which, which amounts to investment, which amounts to taking risk, correct? <laughs> but that is how it is. So, one, one has a desire for retaining what one has and what one looks upon, what one, one has as something value. Then you have desires to avoid and you have desires to get rid of. Once upon a time desires you had to acquire, you acquired, now you want to get rid of. You bought a car, you want to sell the car. You bought a house, you want to sell the house. You got a job, you want to resign. This particular job, give up this job and take up another job. So, we want to get rid of also and we want to avoid also all our desires. Therefore, if I cannot avoid, I am a failure. If I cannot get rid of, I am a failure. If I cannot acquire, I am a failure. <laughs> If I cannot retain as I want to, I am a failure. Therefore, so unfulfilled desires make me always defeated, feel defeated. This is common. This really eats up the person's peace, is not 
is not a person is unambitious. Every person is ambitious. But these failures make the person emotionally paralyzed. And the person begins to develop a starting trouble. Despair. Feels, feels as though it's all meaningless. Life is meaningless. Because no self-esteem. When no self-esteem, then others' approval becomes very important. That is the reason why I said we need to redefine success. Not to solve this problem, but to look at success properly amounts to redefining success because I have to take into account that I desire is a privilege. So I should enjoy that privilege. It should not become a source of despair. <laughs> it should not give me a sense of failure. I must enjoy desiring. I must enjoy fulfilling those desires. Correct? I am healthy, therefore I have ambitions. These days people have guilt because they have ambitions. <laughs> it's not a problem. Desire should not be a problem. It's a privilege. Then what what is the real problem? The problem is I have difficulty in understanding what, what it takes to meet with a certain situations which are unpleasant. I should take into account the reality of Myself as an individual, I have certain capacities, I have certain limitations too. I need to recognize that. It's very important. When I recognize that, then I will have a certain attitude towards this very very what we call unpleasant situations caused by my desire fulfillment pursuits. When I have a desire, I work for its fulfillment. And when I work for its fulfillment, I have a plan. And without a plan, I cannot work for a desire fulfillment. I have a plan. My plan may be wrong, may not be adequate, but that is acceptable. That is expected also. Because as an individual, I am not all-knowing. I have limited knowledge. And therefore, I can, I can consult somebody who has better knowledge in the field. And that is all planning. And therefore, taking into account the knowledge I have is limited. The limitation of knowledge is taken into account. Then the limitation of my Shakti also, my power, that also is limited. Resources are limited. My, my capacity to stop certain situations is very limited. And the hidden variables are too many. I cannot control the hidden variables. I cannot control the known variables. 
how am I going to control the hidden variables? And the hidden variables are too many. When there are too many hidden variables, then naturally I must be ready to face a situation that is not that is not acceptable. Originally <laughs> planned situation was one thing. <laughs> what was the expected outcome was entirely different from what is the outcome I face. So, between the two things, my expected outcome for all my efforts and planning and what has come about between the two, there is always a variation. This is where I pick up my problems. The problem of failure is not elsewhere. The problem of failure is here alone. Somebody said, do not judge. That is also not possible. I am, I am not going to remain without judging in the sense what I am getting for all my efforts is entirely different from what I wanted. Different, the difference is not in my favor, it is against my favor. Very rarely I outscore my expectation, outshine myself, very rarely. I expected to achieve something, I achieved much more than what I expected. That is a rare, rare phenomenon. The usual thing is, is always less than what I expected, sometimes even opposite. And therefore, what is success if you ask me? I will say my capacity to handle these realities, that is called success. <laughs> what is my capacity to handle these realities? That I am going to face situations which are less than what I expected the outcome is less than what I expected, sometimes opposite, rarely equal and much more rarely more than what I expected. But all these are to be handled. If I can handle what is equal to my expectation and what is more than what I expected, if I handle that objectively, dispassionately, then I can handle the other two. The other two is less than what I expected and opposite to my expectation. My usual example is I want to catch the bus. The bus is on the other side of the road. It is standing there. I cross the road to catch the bus. So, this is my plan effort. I look both sides of the road. I dash to the other side and catch the bus. It is equal to my expectation. This is one reality. In my day to day life, then I catch, I cross the road and 
and miss the bus. This is another reality, not uncommon in one's life. Missing the bus is the problem. Then I crossed the road, a friend of mine offers a ride to my home, stopping his car, requesting me, are you going home? Get in. Wow, this is <laughs> very rare, but then it does happen in one's life, more than what I expected. I crossed the road and got a ride, equal more and then less, miss the bus. There is one more you have to remember, that is also reality of life. And that is, I cross the road, attempt to cross the road, both sides I looked at, I did not look at the banana peel on the road and it was empty road. At that time, I had enough time to cross the road. The vehicle was there. <laughs> this side also, it is all, it's all good judgment. But I did not account for a slip on the road. People say there are slips between cup and the lips. You must know there is always a possible slip between, <laughs> between two steps and here I slipped, then afterwards what happened to me I did not know. After two days I wake up in the hospital asking questions who am I? <laughs> All fundamental questions. I did not take into account. The, the slip, which is a possibility. Every planned effort is fraught with this fourfold outcome, equal, more, less, opposite. How do I handle them? If I get elated, Because I got more, I hit the ceiling, then what will be my lot <laughs> when I miss the bus <laughs> and not to talk of the hospital <laughs> going. If I can handle these two realities, one is getting exactly what I wanted, very rare, then more than what I wanted, if I can handle this very dispassionately, with a proper attitude. Dispassionately means subjectively. 
Well, that takes a certain attitude. Then I can perhaps retain that attitude when I face less than what I expected without a big self esteem damaging judgment about myself. Because in every action, this reality lies buried. Therefore, I have an attitude in keeping with my understanding that, that every action is fraught with this third result and also the fourth result, the opposite. When these two come, I can retain the same healthy attitude of certain objectivity. Of course, these are unpleasant. I am not going to be ecstatic. I am not going to be much less happy. But I can take them without a sense of failure. That is understanding, that is attitude, attitude born of understanding. No attitude is abiding, lasting, real without understanding. Understanding of topics which are relevant to what we are talking about. One has to know the background topics with reference to this, you know, proper improper attitudes means proper understanding of the relevant topics accounts for proper attitude. No understanding or inadequate understanding or improper understanding of all the background topics amounts to having improper attitude leading to a self-damaging judgment about oneself. Life is full of these unpleasant situations. I have a new neighbor, unpleasant situation. <laughs> or my old neighbor is no more, unpleasant situation. Maybe a pleasant situation <laughs> is no more there. I need to, I need to handle all these situations with certain objectivity. For all this, we need to understand a number of relevant topics. Understanding the relevant topics is commanding proper attitude. We will talk about those topics next time.